Hi there, my name is Mike with MikePainPhoto.com. Uh, semi-professional photographer, hobbyist, semi-professional, makes some money, not my, by no means my occupational living as far as photographing goes. Enjoy it. Enjoy shooting concert photography, newborns, uh, portraits, senior portraits, uh, casual weddings, and so forth. Uh, and I'm always on the lookout for new gear just as well, just like many of you who are photo enthusiasts. One product I ran across that I really loved that uh, I want to share with you just some simple tips. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine, she bought some radio poppers just the other day. She said she was having a time trying to get everything hooked up, connected right, and everything. So I shared with her some things that I learned also the hard way. And uh, I guess that's why they give you those owner's manual to print out, to read. But uh, who reads the manual? I probably should. But anyway... Uh, radiopoppers.com. They're a great bunch to work with. And anyway, I want to be talking about the JRX Studio system that I bought, okay? This is not really a tutorial about the results you get using the radio poppers and off-camera flash, but more so just the basic hookup of a radio popper, okay? I've got a Nikon D300 right here with a 50 millimeter lens. Doesn't really matter though. Uh, like I said, this is not about shooting shots or anything like that. It's about the basic hookup of the radio poppers, okay? Uh, for demonstration, I've got the Nikon SB600. I also own the SB800. Those are really the only two flashes I use. I use speed lights for my lighting. I do have one strobe, but I hardly shoot indoors where I've got electricity at. Um, however, the radio poppers do work great with strobes as well. Anyway, so anyway, talking about the JRX Studio system. All right, we've got our transmitter right here. You've got a receiver as well. It's a small receiver. And you also have an optional RPC cube as well. Now, if you do not want to be able to control flash power via these knobs on the transmitter, the RPC cube is not a requirement to have. You can save yourself $29 and not get this. And that's perfectly fine. We know that flash power is mainly controlled by aperture. However, with radio popper, the transmitter, and the RPC cube, it does enable you to adjust flash power by the switches right here. So if I'm shooting at F5.6 at 1 1 25th, and I have this set at half power, but all of a sudden I just feel like I need a little quick boost of more flash, I can either change my F-stop or just... Move it just a little bit and that controls my power. Anyway, let me show you how to hook this up and the sequence of turning things on that I have found seem to work. This could be totally wrong, but I've talked with Radio Popper and that is how they guided me through it as well. So here's the transmitter. It goes on the hot shoe, uh, just where your flash would, okay? All right, here is the RPC cube. Now this is going to attach to your flash can lock it down right there and here's a cable all the cables do come with this there's several different plug up options as well so now I'm going to take this cable attach it to the receiver okay I have my dip switch set to number five in the up position that corresponds with the second switch in here my SB800 is programmed to the first dial SB600 is programmed to the second dial. If I had a third flash, I could program it to the third dial. And that way I could control three different flashes at the same time and adjust the power manually if I wanted to. I think that's a great feature. Uh, some of you may not shoot that way and that's okay too. A lot of us get the results, the same results. Sometimes we just go about it in a different manner. So that's cool, okay? Now let me show you what I've done also for ease of purpose. When you get these things, they just hang like that. You hook it up, it's like, okay, I tried wrapping it around here, doing it this way. Uh, you know, you can mount it on the stand. You can put it in the, the uh, little foot right here, but you still got this going on. So with the power and Velcro, so I attached a piece of Velcro right here to the SB600 and also Velcro right here on my transmitter. So guess what? Wham, attach this just like that. Then I can take this, screw it onto my stand, uh, insert it where the soft box is, and we're ready to go. Okay, let me show you how to power this thing up, the sequence of events, okay? 
here's what I do. And here's what seems to work. Anyway, I power up the flash unit. Turn the flash unit on. I power up the receiver. Just like that, you'll notice it fired. That's a good sign. That means it's communicating, okay? Then I fire up the transmitter, which is attached to the camera. In this case, the Nikon D300. It uh, doesn't matter if you've got Canon, whatever you prefer. Uh, this tutorial is not about who's got the best camera or what. Anyway, when I do that, what I normally do is I take the, whichever dial is corresponding, which in case the middle dial, I'll call it B dial, I just turn it all the way down, turn it all the way up, and all the way back down. It seems to kind of reset it, okay? And uh, anyway, I normally start at half power on my dial right here. So let's say I'm shooting at F4 or F5.6 at 1 1 25th of a second. That's just a starting point right there. Anyway, here's one thing I've noticed about the Nikon flashes, and you notice as well when it's on a hot shoe. They will go to sleep. They will not show that they are in the ready position. If I opt to shoot, my flash will not fire, okay? Let's just do a test shot and turn the camera on and you can see, watch this, I will click. Okay, no flash. Well, guess what? Now the flash is awake. You see the ready button is on, okay? It is now awake, so it will fire. So here we go. Again, just a test shot like that, the flash is now awake. I could do either way, okay? Let me show you one other way just to wake it up, which is what I normally do with the radio popper system. Again, this is the JRX system with the RPC cube. I think it retails for $179 at radiopoppers.com. The RPC cube is an additional $29. So that gets you up and running with wireless flash. You do have the option of Pocket Wizards or the Nikon CLS system. I notice with the CLS system, if my flash is tucked inside a softbox, oftentimes it did not fire because it would not see the transmission of light. However, it is a great system, I think. I just decided, opted to go with the, the radio powers as well. Uh, anyway, okay, my flash has gone to sleep now. Let me show you one way to wake the flash up, okay? Here we go. We can take... A little green button which is lit up tap it one time that lights up our flash you can see the ready button is on now and it's ready to fire so in other words if I'm sitting I'm talking with my subject or my model and I feel like my flash has gone to sleep and I can't start shooting I just hit my button right there and watch we can go we fire it'll just fire away now okay it's good to go so that's one thing to be mindful of with the uh, radio popper system and the Nikon flashes. I'm not certain about other flashes such as Canon. Uh, I'm strictly Nikon. Uh, anyway, so that's just a few thoughts about the JRX uh, studio system. If you're looking to buy it, a few tips to uh, know. Maybe you learn that the hard way, okay? Just like me. And uh, like I say, just want to share this information with you. This is my first video, actually, that I've used. I'm using a Nikon D7000, Rode NT shotgun mic as well. Just hanging out in my kitchen right now. And uh, just thought I'd share these things with you. Hopefully it's been some valuable information to you. Please feel free to post a comment. Uh, you know, leave something there. If it was helpful, if it was, if it was not helpful. Or maybe some other tips that you've found using the uh, radio popper system as well. Okay, thanks a lot and uh, enjoy photographing.